how's everybody doing? I am your host, Rich. Here we have Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO from Copper Bank, Gianni Kovacevic. How are you doing today, Gianni? I'm doing fantastic. Copper is nearing its old all-time high. So it's on the front page of every publication, but the, the stocks haven't moved. The juniors are just waiting, waiting, waiting. I think timing, fantastic. So what does that mean for copper? You're the copper expert. You're the copper guy. Copper being at $4, what does that mean for copper and the industry? I've been saying this for some years. That's why we have our strategy at Copper Bank. We bought really well-situated projects. And the, the NPV, the net present value of our portfolio, when copper is below $3 a pound, they're not economic. But when it goes over $3 a pound, based on historical studies, every 25 cents the copper price climbs, we we gain $300 million of net present value for the, for the portfolio based on those historical studies. Wow. Copper crested $4 a pound today. It's coming to a mania phase, but the stocks haven't moved yet. And we closed our financing. We technically do not need to raise any money until middle of 2023 wow. to pay for all of our holding costs and what we need. This means no dilution. Unless we see capital appreciation, and we're going to present a lot of news to the market in the next 90 days, 120 days, and then we'll digest that news. And we, we aim to present some really compelling drill programs on our historical portfolio. And I think we're going to go over some of the, the nuts and bolts why I believe the, the, stock, the, the projects that we bought, the last time copper was $4 a pound, Rich, this is very important for people to understand. The collective market cap high of that stuff based on Copper Bank's structure would be well in excess of $3 a share. We're trading at 55 cents. So there's, that's a historical precedent from before. This was in 2011. Um, it's go time. We've got the capital in hand to, to answer more unanswered questions. And there are, there are other reasons why I believe our company is gonna be an outlier. It already is, it's outperforming uh, some, some of our peers. We got lots of catch up to do. Now, since we did our first interview, the stock has done really well. It's almost doubled. Congratulations. Lots of price appreciation. Super exciting for our community because a lot of our members got in around 30 cents. So now today it's getting close to 60. So really, really exciting. Our community super happy. Everyone's talking about copper. Then you look at market watch today. Copper breaks $4 all-time highs for copper. So like you said, it is starting to become front page news. Yeah. Where does copper go from here? Do we go to $5? Do you think that they can continue this, this trend up? Yeah, I, I can't underline enough the importance of copper breaking $4 a pound. It's go time. And if you look at what happened with lithium stocks and cobalt stocks and cannabis and crypto, this is the small move. What you're talking about, Copper Bank going from 35 cents to 55 cents, this is peanuts. When you look at, and I can use historical precedent on the stuff that we bought in the bear market, well in excess of $3 a pound. But where's copper going? Unlike oil, copper is the future. And we will install as much electrical networks, that's what green energy is, in the next 25, 30 years as was installed in the last 130 the demand for copper will be in excess of 6% CAGR growth rate for the rest of this decade. Sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little bit lower. But right now it's happening. The market's been tight. And the world's single biggest buyer of copper, which is China State Grid, they buy just under 3 million tons a year, very reliably. Okay, the, the copper market's 25 million tons and it's gonna be growing by 6% a year. Well, guess what? In China's 14th five-year plan, they announced their Green, Green New Deal. And China's state grid is going to be spending 50% more capital starting this year. Now, I haven't done an, an exact analysis of what that means for copper, but just using simple, simple logic, they're going to be consuming, you know, like a million or a million and a half tons more copper starting right now. And we've had this tight market. And if traders come in and take some of the copper that should be used for fabrication, that's where this price appreciation has went ballistic. But you know what, Rich? It's not going to stop because guess what? The Green New Deal is electrical equipment. And people that make motors, cables, transformers, all these things, electrical vehicles, business is good. And it's going to get better. They actually need the material. So they can pass it on to the consumer. So I believe that, in my opinion, copper prices are going to continue to climb. 
they should surpass their old all-time high, which is $4.50 a pound. And that's where you're going to make a fortune owning the companies that feed into this trend because you're looking at the net present value of any project. I don't care if it's oil, nickel, whatever commodity. When that commodity is low or be, the point where the project is not economic, well, what's the net present value? It's this, it's exactly zero. But as that commodity climbs, the torque you get, you know, like or, or you just look at our, our um, historical documentation and people should use this in the reference of everything I say, the, these were done in 2013, uh, but they were done to the 43-101 standards on page four or five of our presentation. You know, you get to $4 copper, we've got a net present value based on those historical um, economic studies of one and a half billion US dollars, excess of that. That's wow. more than 2 billion Canadians. So for our market cap, which is $30 million, you know, you could start capturing some of that. And there's a reason that th th there was over 250 million market cap for what we own once upon a time. You also ask how much money has been spent on the projects. It would take an excess of $120 million to duplicate everything that's already occurred. So th there's another delta there, a 5X differential, just to get to what, what's already been spent on the portfolio. And the location of these projects in Arizona, in the Copper Corridor, in Nevada, in world, the world famous Elko County, uh, it was a famous mining county in the United States, in Nevada, that's where our two projects are located. And there's gonna be um, heightened interest in that portfolio, in our company, and we are cheaper than our peer group by a power of magnitude in MPV, net present value per share, the amount of historical pounds in the ground we have per share, the amount of historical work that's occurred per share, and also an important one, the GNA per share, the lowest in the industry. We're shareholders. We own millions of shares. Insiders did 50% of our financing. I can't eat my shares rich. I want to monetize the strategy. And we throw pennies like manhole covers. So the, the, this precious capital that we've raised right now, it's enough to cover all of our basic GNA and to do the basic studies we're doing right now without one share of dilution. Only if we see appreciation and as we're about to embark on um, uh, contemplating drilling to enhance the portfolio, that's where we'll do additional dilution. But I don't see that happening at this price level. I encourage people to follow my insider buying. You're going to see me buying a lot of stock if our share price stays at these levels, because I still think it's one of the best value, copper development, expiration, royalty plays, three businesses in one company. You just need to buy Copper Bank and you're going to have a very balanced uh, a portfolio of copper assets. I'm going to say one more thing for people. This is very important to understand when you look at Go the ahead. life cycle of copper mine. It takes now 20 years to, to delineate, build out, de-risk, do the engineering, the metallurgy, the permitting to put a copper mine into production. It is, and as, as I've said this before, it is ruinously expensive to get to the point where you say, I, a company will build the project. It take, takes time and money. These companies now want to replace reserves. They know business is going to be good. They don't have 20 years. Our projects are basically at year 13 or year 14 in that 20 year arc. A lot of money has been spent there, a lot of manpower and a lot of land assembly. Very hard to assemble land now in copper. You go try to go staking projects or go try to get something in a well-situated area, not going to happen. You got to do that in the teeth of a bear market. We've done all that. That's already occurred. So you've got a team that's motivated. They're fully aligned with the shareholder. They're, they're not doing it for salaries. They're doing it for equity, for, to make money in, in the shares. Like me, I'm the largest share. I envision in this strategy, not my salary. I didn't take one penny that I took as cash. Everything that I've made in this company since last, uh, about July, I put right back into the company. Okay. So we're fully aligned with people. And you should be looking at the execution of our team. Do what we say, say what we do. But Copper Bank is a story they're going to hear about and they're going to continue hearing about Copper Bank. And it's the way I believe it should be within a balanced portfolio. But in your electrification green energy quadrant, there should be room for something like a Copper Bank because that's where you're going to see disproportionate returns, in my opinion. Are you setting any goals as a management team and as a CEO of a specific market cap? You've mentioned a 30 million market cap, which is really, in my opinion, still a baby market cap which is fantastic for shareholders. We that's why we buy the stock. We, we, I believe like you, it's cheap. Yeah. 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 We look, that's one of our metrics is 30 million market cap. Oh, imagine if this grows to a 1 billion market cap, huge upside for the investors. That's a very key metric for us as, as well as share structure. 
You guys have a great share structure. You guys, you just said you're not looking to dilute potentially until 2023, which means unless we, we get appreciation, we need to see if I guess the price goes crazy, consider doing other which things, makes sense yeah. because levels, when the company stock goes crazy, everyone wants to raise money, right? That makes yeah. sense. And so in saying that, do you have any goals as far as like a market cap? Are you looking to maybe hit a hundred million market cap? Is that a goal of yours? Is there a goal? Is that something you think about? Well, that's a good question, Rich. And I got to be careful in the answer there because everyone is a promoter and they're going to tell you some fantastical answer. But I will tell you this, this is real estate. We, we're not going to build the mine. That's crystal clear. I'm the custodian of these projects and my team's skill set is de-risking them from a geological perspective and from an engineering perspective. So we can answer these unanswered questions. But what if someone knocks on my door and says, I would like to do commerce on one of your projects or one of your exploration projects. How do I sell it? What do I sell it for? Well, I have a, I have a view what they're worth. And if they're going to pay me some huge number in cash, of course, we take it. We are coming into the decade of copper. We want to, if we do a deal on one of our projects, I would be highly motivated to do something in a strategic equity way where we still have, we get a lift, but then we get another lift with the group that's going to partner with us. So you get a, this double, um, double beta, if you will. Um, the, the answer to that is I look at a couple of different metrics. Well, I know in 2011, the market cap of everything I ha- that I own was o- over 250 million. That's where I get this $3 a share. So I know that it was trading at that once upon a time. That's when copper was $4 a pound. Well, copper is $4 a pound today. And the prospects for copper are far better today than they were then. I also know that they spent or it would take 120 million US dollars to duplicate everything that we own. That's a dollar and a half a share. You haven't even got to the asset value. This is simply what it it cost to delineate a project. So when you're asking me what the market cap should be, I would think those are two historical precedents that we can look at. And then we look at the net present value of this portfolio. We want to go now and further de-risk the portfolio. We want to find additional resources ideally near surface, particularly at Copper Creek in Arizona. And then our team will go and retabulate the uh, to, to update a mineral resource estimate. And we want to present that data to the market and the market can decide the quality, location, and the prospects of, of, of that hard work. But I do not see if the market cap of Copper Bank stays here at this $30 million range, there's one thing I will do. I will continue to buy my own stock. I will buy hundreds of thousands of shares on, on days of dips, because I think it's a good way for me to obtain more exposure to this company. And I will be the one turning the lights off. And this is my focus. You know, how many people get distracted where they're on six or seven boards and they got all these different things. I wake up in the morning. I, one thing I think about copper bank. I want to talk about, talk with my team, understand the strategy, talk about copper, understand it. If I got opportunities to speak about energy, I'll do that. Always segueing into copper and into Copper Bank. So people in your community need to get more familiar with me, look at some of my historical work, but I also want to invite them to read my book. If they have a US address, my book has been printed 26,000 times. I have a US publisher. I will send for free a copy of my beautiful hardcover with with copper foil book, been printed 26,000 times, read by the who's who of our industry. I will send them a free copy. You have to have a US address. Now, for okay. those international, how do they get in contact with you for this? I'll put the description have to in the video. Exactly. You, you can get the Audible do, Audible edition of my book, or you can get it on a Kindle. But if you want the hardcover, you have to be in the States because my, my publisher's in the United States, and then it just becomes um, logistically ridiculous to go outside of that. But that's something where people can get more familiar with this trend. It's like having a five hour dinner with me, and you'd be shocked you'd fall out of your chair rich if you knew who read this book and who liked this book this is not stale dated my book really comes to the fold because it's all about electrification and the future of energy and the way i'm playing it is with mm-hmm. copper bank later will be lithium bank that's our sister company doing lithium Ooh. but but copper bank is uh, is the focus and they're the two kings of this wave of electrification lithium I, and I like lithium too i like the way you're going if there was one thing you would want shareholders to know before we say goodbye, what would it be? Well, we're fully aligned with you. Um, my team is uh, not in it for, uh, we, and we, we've demonstrated that we don't needlessly raise capital so we can pay a bunch of salaries for people that aren't aligned with you. You have to buy into this strategy. My team, even when I bought the projects, I didn't pay cash. I said, you have to take shares. If you want to buy into this, you take equity. 
Now, if you want to sell your equity at stupidly low levels, that's your business. We'll, we'll buy, you can sell. Or if you want to stick with the strategy, you need to be aligned with everyone buying the stock. I know I've demonstrated this over five years. I got seven pages of insider buying. That's why I, I own millions of shares. And every single time we've done a financing, it's been above the market without a warrant. Now, when, when we announced this particular that. When we announced this particular financing, it was trading at 30, 32 cents. Rich, I announced a 35 cent no warrant financing. Now, who did it? We did 50% of it. I knew it would get completed. It was completed. We closed it two hours ago. Wow. So timing is good. You got the copper price breaking out, entering the front pages of every publication, and our stock is barely moved. So I've given enough information for now. We're going to follow this up. Maybe we'll do a report card in about 10 or 10 days, two weeks. We'll see how the copper market plays out and we'll see where we're trading. Thank you so much, Gianni Kovacevic, the CEO of Copper Bank, a company that is really new for our community, but is already up almost 100% in about a week since we first started talking. Guys, remember Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence. Always do your research. Before you invest in anything that we talk about and discuss here in Rich TV Live, consult your financial advisor. Chances are your financial advisor is going to say, where'd you get this pick? You're going to say, from my boy, Rich. And they're going to say, that's a really good pick. If you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners, and we bring them to you first. Thank you for your time, Gianni. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day, everybody.